I want to read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. There we are. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives and they were therein uh, it, that were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and <clears throat> their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. And David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David, David's uh, two wives were taken captives, uh, and Enoam and um, the Jezreelites and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the uh, Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his son's uh, and for his daughters. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. And David said to Abiathar, the priest, um, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought uh, thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after the troop? Shall I overtake them? And he said, and he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Amen. <clears throat> now, if I start speaking Spanish, you'll say, what's he saying? Just pretend I'm speaking in tongues. <laughs> I'm so used to speaking in Spanish that English now is kind of like a little shaky for me, but here we go. <laughs> I want to um, let you know that when the pursuer wakes up within you, the possessor will rise, and you're going to recover what God has for you, and you're going to recover it today. Now is the time. This is a day. And you have to understand that God wants you to receive what he has uh, for you. God not only sends us and tells us to pursue God not only tells us that we're going to overtake our enemies and we're going to recover all, but God is a pursuer. He is a recoverer, and God will overcome our enemies with us. Amen? Together. And so we have to understand that it's going to be together that we work with the Lord, for surely we are going to overtake our enemies, and we, without fail, shall recover all. But meanwhile, we have to realize that we have been in a time of transition and change. Uh, it's not been an easy time for any of us to walk in this day of change. Uh, the same happened here with David when him and the men that was with him had gone out. When they had returned, they had to confront that there was a transition happening in their lives. They had no idea what was going on. All they knew was that their women, children was gone. What they built with their hands had been burned down. The only thing they knew was that they were sitting in a pile of ashes. There was ashes everywhere, and they understood that their family being in captivity, uh, some were there. They didn't know if some had been uh, killed or murdered. They didn't know anything that was happening. All they could do is be in that pile of ashes and cry and cry. The Bible says that they cried so much that they had exhausted their strength from crying and crying and crying. And there was no more strength in them to mourn or to cry or to feel bad or depression or whatever they were going through. There was no more strength within them to be able to do this. Now, one of the things I want you to understand that part of this process of the ashes is also the process of understanding that we are uh, in a breaking point in our lives. Many of us are in a breaking point, 
And the breaking point means that nothing looks the same, nothing seems the same. Even sometimes your prayer time with the Lord doesn't seem the same. You don't understand why it seems different. When I was going through my time of change, it was not an easy time. I know that uh, there was many, many things that was happening. There was many things that in my life was going on. And I would tell Pastor Lauren, I don't know if I can make it into this third day. I'm happy in the second day. Let me just stay here. And he would say, you're going to make it. We're all going to make it in. And I would say, I don't know about that one. And he said, well, I do. Well, I'm not sure. Well, I am. And if you know Pastor Lauren, he'll let you know how it is, and he'll walk away from you. That's how it is. And so part of this situation that I was going through was not only that, but also for 20 years I lived in a country that was a country full of war, full of uh, uh, gang members, they ruled the streets, they ruled the neighborhoods. Uh, you couldn't really go out. You had to be careful where you went. It was constant. And so your children couldn't go out. You couldn't let them go anywhere because you didn't know what was going to happen to them. And so our, my kids were in the house all the time, and their big thing is somebody comes over and plays games with them inside the house, or they would go to somebody else's house perhaps that we would take them and drop them off and pick them up because they couldn't be out on the streets. It was a very, very difficult time. The murder capital of the world was truly that. Many mothers crying their hearts out because of their children being murdered. Uh, Many, many, many families lost many members in their family because of the situation. And so we come and we are living under a situation so difficult. And the people, I always said to them, if you want to know why the country is the way it is, look in the mirror. Because you're the same as even the gang members are. Look in the mirror if you want to know why the society is the way it is. And this time had passed, and I really felt that we were on a good direction when all of a sudden it started up again. You had to deal with people and had to deal with people's attitudes and people's comments and people doing things. And I've had every kind of thing happen to me. And I just would say, Lord, uh, I just don't know if I can take this anymore. It's been 20 years. Why am I still dealing with this, these situations? You know what I'm saying? How many are dealing still with situations and you say, why, Lord, do we have to continue to deal with it? But we need to understand that at this point in our lives, when we get to the place as David and these men, where we feel like they've done war, they've hidden from Saul, they've been able to make it to this point, they've been able to settle in with their families, and now once again, they're having problems. Why, Lord? We were pursued to murder David, and now, once again, uh, he's been pursued, and they've taken his children and his family. Why, Lord? And that's where we're at many a times. Why, Lord, do we have to go through this? Why is this still happening, Lord? Why do I feel this way again, Lord? And sometimes you get tired of feeling that way. And when you get tired of feeling that way, that weighs it on your faith to believe God. Because what I would say is, everything that was still is happening, and I can't see a third day where it's going to change. After so many years of going through the same thing over and over and over, Lord, I just can't believe that things are going to change. And so we have faith, but Lord, help our unbelief. Help us, Lord, because we cannot do it of ourselves. And that's where David was. He was running scared because the men that had uh, been with him, that believed in the prophetic word that David would be king, that believed that he was chosen by God, that he heard from God, that he walked with God, 
the men that were with him now see what had happened, and they said, let's stone him. And at that point, David didn't know what to do because he was just as tormented as they were. He had lost his faith for a moment. He cried out. He had the same feelings. But he went in and he talked with the Lord. But on this time that he talked with the Lord, the Lord spoke to him and said to him, you need to pursue, overtake, and recover all. And with that word, God restored faith into his spirit. And you have to understand that at this place where we're at right now, we cannot give up the faith that we have. We need to continue to believe but now we need to believe that God wants to take us to a higher level of faith in him. A higher level. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. And when we look at these words, we see that substance is the fact that there is something concrete, something of essence, something that is assured and something of confidence, something of a person that is confident, that is what substance is. And who is our foundation? Jesus Christ. Who is that solid concrete under us that will obtain us and, be, and hold us at all times? Whether, whether the storms are coming, whatever is happening in our lives, we need to understand that we are sustained by our foundation that is Jesus Christ. And we have to believe. And we have to continue to hope. Hope when it's lost can really take a person into a deep, dark depression. We must hope at all time in Christ for the things that we have not seen. What are the things we have not seen? The things that we have been hearing about, the prophetic word. And many a times we haven't seen it. And many a times, like me, we get to the place where we say, this has been, and what more can I expect but what it has been? What more can I expect? And I remember one night, I stayed up all night, and I just cried out to the Lord, and I spoke with him, and I confronted him, and I said, why, 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 and Lord this, and Lord that, and Lord here, and Lord there, and, and the Lord carried me that night as I sought him. And in the morning, I don't know what happened. All I know is he came and he answered me. He broke all those ways of thinking and gave me a new hope for what was to come. The third day, the third dimension, the new day that we're speaking of today. That it's a now time. It's not going to happen. It is now that it is happening. And so we need to be people that believe, just like it says, things that you do not see. When we don't see something, but we believe it's going to be, we're, look, we're talking about the conviction and we're talking about proof. But our proof is... He never lets us down. He never, never goes back on his word. He will be faithful unto us at all times. And so we see that David, in this situation, uh, began to believe when he received that prophetic word, he began to believe and he began to have confidence once again in the leadership that was with him, and he began to uh, believe the prophetic word and the prophetic promises that God had given him, and he had to, and he came back in, unto himself to know that God had called him to be king. No longer was he sitting in the ashes. No longer were they all covered with ashes. No all were no longer were they all crying in their ashes. Now David came and he spoke, and he said, "The Lord has spoken to me." And he says, we need to get up and we need to pursue because we're going to overtake and we're going to recover everything that was taken from us. And they believed him. And they got up and they believed again in his calling and his ministry. 
and they got up because all of us have those moments when we stop believing for something or believing in somebody or believing in the prophetic word that comes from Pastor Lorne. We all have that moment when we think, is it really going to happen? When will it happen? We have to trust God that God, when he speaks, he begins to move. And he begins to move people and he begins to restore hope and faith in them. And this is what happened. And all of a sudden, what happened was they went after uh, their wives and after the family and they recovered all that was taken from them. That's why I want you to understand that in our situations, maybe you're sitting there quiet and you're not saying anything to anybody about how you're going. Well, I can confess how it has been for me. It has been a difficult road to enter into this new time because I continue to believe that it was going to be like it was because I was still seeing in the natural and not living in the reality of the kingdom that what was in front of me was going to continue to be. Because I was seeing things in the natural that weren't reality in the kingdom of God. If I believed what was said, I would have continued to believe it. But there is a time when God allows us to be breakable. He allows us to be broken. And we need to understand that uh, when we are broken, uh, we need to come to the Lord and understand that that higher level is waiting for us. That higher level, that sense of who we truly are in Christ. Because many a times, many, many, many a times, we don't even realize who we are in Christ. And we come to church and we don't say anything to anybody and we hear the word once again and we think, am I really going to believe this? Yes, I'm really going to believe it. And how long am I going to believe it? Until the Lord breaks me and says, it's time. And I don't know what he does when he breaks us. All I know is when we're broken, we need him to fix us. And when he fixes us, he does it right. And he brings us into our identity to know really who we truly are. Our true identity as sons and daughters of Christ. Those that are fulfilling the calling for which he has called us to. And so the enemy comes to our lives and he wants to shatter, first of all, your confidence. The confidence that you have in God. Then he seeks to break your focus that you have on the Lord and on his word, on him. Let's just put it on him because he's one with his word. So if we're focused on him, you don't need to be focused on anything else. That was one of my problems. I always kept saying, Lord, but you said. Lord, but you said. And I had to repent and I had to say, hey, Lord, I'm not going to say you said. I'm going to just say, Lord, I believe you. It's a whole different way of thinking for me. And so when we leave the second day, we leave saying, what about this and what about that? And you promised and you said, and I don't see it. And we go into, Lord, it's all about you, worshiping you, knowing, Lord, that from you flows all good things to his people. And so then we get filled with fear, and fear paralyzes us. And when we're paralyzed, we enter into grief, and we enter into heartache, and we're people that cannot move forward in life. We can't move forward in God because we have been paralyzed by fear. And so God wants us to understand that once you come back from being broken down by him, because he sees all these things within us. He knows what's inside of each and every one of us. He knows where you're focusing it at and where you shouldn't be focusing at. He knows when you've lost your hope, when you've lost your confidence. He knows when you're judging the, uh, the, the future with the past. He knows everything about us. He knows your hurts. He knows your sicknesses. He knows everything about you. And even at that, he comes to us. And when we're broke down, we need to understand that he's going to build and we're going to come back better than ever, and you're going to say, I can't believe I'm standing in the position with God that I'm standing in. 
Because God's not going to leave us broken. He will not do that. And God is not going to leave us sitting in the ashes like David sat. God is not going to allow us to continue sitting in our ashes. We need to understand that God is a God who has planned a complete recovery for our lives. And that recovery can be many, many, many of things that we don't need to name. We just need to know he's going to bring me a recovery. He's going to recover whichever area uh, he seems uh, uh, that needs to be recovered by you in your life. He's going to recover my strength, my ability to believe, my ability to go out and speak to people, my ability to minister to people. He's going to restore to me and take away shyness or whatever God needs to do. He truly is going to do it. He is. Verse 8 says, God assured to David that the Amalekites' victory over Ziglag would be reversed. And you need to understand that. It's been reversed by the Lord. And that David was going to prevail over his enemies. And you need to understand that. Your enemies will never prevail against you. Not a one. People are thinking about their jobs, my boss. Your boss isn't going to prevail against you. You have a boss with a bad situation. You need to bless that boss. Me, bless my boss, that wicked demon. Yes. That's the way you win him over. How do I bless him? Be on time. How do I bless him? Do what you're supposed to be doing. Quit being lazy. How am I supposed to bless them? You need to understand that God is going to cause you to win over your enemies. You're not going to get mad. You're not going to leave work. You're going to continue on because God is going to give you victory over your enemies. And so when we see this, we need to understand that we, at this point in our lives, as Pastor Lauren has been mentioning today, is the new day. We need to understand that that means that we are coming out of the chaos, out of all the situations that we've been confronting, and that God now is going to bring us to that place uh, of fullness in this third day to where I walk with my identity, where I walk in recovery, where I walk discovering who I truly am, which is a person with courage, a person with confidence, and a person with conviction. Courage, confidence, and conviction. And this to me sounds like, I wrote this down last night, it sounds to me like, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. I think we need to understand that God has given us this time to come out so we can be renewed in the sense of courage, confidence, and to have a conviction. And in this day of a new awakening, this day that God has brought this new day, David was the man of recovery. Deep within your spirit and deep within his spirit, God began to walk with him in the fullness of this new day. Now, if you say, you just said that a minute ago, it's because I'm not used to writing notes. I'm used to having it here and just giving it out. But I'm trying to be a little bit more diplomatic. And so then suddenly, David, what did he begin to do? He also began to act like the true person he was in Christ, which is the king. We know that. That he took upon himself that prophetic identity he has, the same as all of us have. We all have to accept the identity that God has given us. We all have to begin to walk in that identity that God has given us. And we have to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that the identity that God gave us was for a purpose. He gave us the DNA, the same as David had, the same as Moses had, the same as Joshua had. Those that were pursuers, those that overcame the enemy, those that begin to recover all 
that was promised to them. And this is where we are at today, to understand that we are at that point, in this third day, of recovering all. We have the DNA of the Lord to overcome. And so when the pursuer wakes up, what happens? The possessor, the possessor rises and the recovery is born in the now. I want to say that, and, and just give you a little bit of testimony. I don't know what time it is or how much time I have. I'm good. Okay. Uh, I just want to say that I, I know this because I've lived it. I've lived it because it, and it's cost me something. And it's my message to people to let our people uh, here today know you are going to overcome. You are going to overcome. You are going to overcome. And you need to know that it's not an easy road to enter into this new day. Because now you've got to get up out of the ashes. And you have to believe that what the king says is true. You have to activate a new level of hope. And God's going to give you that new level of hope. You operate on what you have right now. When I went through this period of a transformation and I knew something powerful had happened inside of me and I kept saying, is this really you, Lord, or is this my imagination? There is an anointing that goes with me everywhere I go. When I go to bed, I have it. When I wake up, I have it. I'm speaking in tongues in the night and I'm like getting, waking up, speaking in tongues. I'm like, Lord, what is this? And I began to assert that God had anointed me in a new way, in a different way than what I had lived in the past. Things have changed dramatically. The church in El Salvador is up and running, it has four pastors that oversee it, and it is very blessed. They're very excellent pastors, good preachers, if I do say so myself. I like to sit down and listen to them preach, so... If I like to listen to you preach, you're a good preacher because I don't listen to anybody, anybody but Pastor Lauren and whoever else he puts here. But I'm telling you that things began to change. And all of a sudden, I felt like I had to leave El Salvador and I felt like the Lord wanted me to go to Mexico and start over with all these people. And I thought, Lord, this is going to be a long road. But then I thought, that's what I'm called to. That's what I'm called to. And so off we went. And I got an apartment, and I've, I'm, I'm there in Mexico. And I said, I've all my life, since I was 19, when I received my first prophecy from Pastor Lorne, 18 or 19 years old, we always felt that we would be in Mexico, first of all, before anything. But the Lord had to take me to a school that was hard knocks. And taught me that I had to be just as hard as they were. And so it was a difficult school, and it took me 20 years to graduate. Can you imagine you come here to uh, minister's training school, and how long is minister's training school? Three years? Three years, and you are got your certificate, and you're good to go. Problem is, we're not going, but we got to go. We've got to go out and take the gospel. Well, it took me 20 years to graduate. And in this new day, I say, Lord, everything that you have spoken to me, I'm going to believe for. And there's a shyness that I used to carry for so, since I was a kid that has gone away. I don't care who you are, where you are, I start talking about the Lord to you. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are or who you're with. I just start talking about the Lord. I was in, I don't know if I told this, when I was in the uh, plane in the airport, and this woman started crying. And her little kid was sitting there with her, but she was crying, and she started crying, and she really started crying. And I said, can I pray for you? And she said, yes, please. So I prayed for her, and off we went to get on our flights. When she went by me, she wasn't crying anymore, and she says, thank you. That helped me so much. I have such a peace in my heart. And she kept going back to her 
see. What our situation was, I don't care. God knows. All I know is I had to give the word and prayer. And I didn't care who looks. Doesn't matter to me. I've got to do what God's called me to do. And then I went to church. I started going to church in Mexico that Sunday. And I was like, now what the heck is going on here? It was like, like, it was like a, a, a big earthquake came and everybody was laying out on the floor. And I was like, "Woo! I can feel it in my hands because I could feel the fire in my hands. And I didn't even have to touch them. Boom, 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 boom. And I was like, deliver them, Lord. Deliver them. Deliver them. Bring deliverance, Lord. And somebody says, man, I just come out of the bathroom. I saw everybody on the floor. And I said, what did I miss? <laughs> you didn't miss anything. I still got more. I'm charged up. And when I was in El Salvador, and this happened for several weeks, and I, I'm several weeks, the Lord was not, not everybody falling out, but several weeks, people would just start crying in their seats. They were receiving healing while I was preaching, and I was like, okay, Lord, this is just a little bit more than what I thought, but that's wonderful. And they'd just get up and say, oh, my back was healed. I just felt a heat going down my back, and I've been healed. And I was like, okay, Lord, praise the Lord. And then I went to uh, another church. Uh, when I went to El Salvador, I went to another church there that they invited me a day before I left to go come here to Michigan. And when I was at that church, it was a Pentecostal church. And there must have been over, over 100 people there. And I made uh, what, what I call a mistake. I said, now, how many here have the Holy Spirit? And nobody raised their hands. And I thought, did they understand me? I said, how many here need to receive the Holy Spirit? Everybody's hand went up, and I thought, oh, my Lord, I'm in, a, I'm in trouble now. Because I'm used to praying for people with my hands. I was raised that way here at Mount Zion when we first began. They come down, lay hands on us always, and hey, when Pastor Lauren preached, I didn't care if I understood, I didn't understand, I received the word I did, I had to go up because I wanted prayer. Lay your hands on me, Sister Jean, Sister Bonnie, lay your hands on me. Sister Diane sometimes would come up and pray, and I am used to that, and I always laid hands on people for many, many years. Well, this time, I saw them people, and I said, Lord, what am I going to do here? So I just said, right now, the Lord has promised me you're going to receive the Holy Spirit. There is a fire at this altar. Receive ye the Holy Ghost, and that place lit on fire. Everybody received the Holy Spirit. Four people had not received, and they came up and spoke immediately. And I, I think I was more amazed than them people where I was like, oh, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And then I was in Mexico City getting ready to board the plane to go to El Salvador. And I said, uh, I went to a church, and this church was a little bit different because they only give 30 minutes to preach, 30 minutes, and you have to sit down. And he says, and you sit down right away. I said, well, what about prayer? And he said, no, 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 we don't pray in the morning, only at night. And I was like, okay, that's new. And I said, okay. So what I did was preach 20 minutes, and then I prayed for everybody. I said, wherever you're sick, wherever you're afflicted, you lay your hands right there, and right now the Lord is going to heal you. And as I sent that word forth, as always, the Spanish people aren't very emotional, and they won't come running saying, look what the Lord did. Not always. But all of a sudden, this woman come up crying and crying, and, cr and she couldn't even talk. And I thought, lady, your Band-Aid's falling off your eyeball. And I was looking at her and thinking, are you depressed? Do you need prayer? Is your household bad? What? She just didn't say anything. You know, so your mind starts th running. And she said, <laughs> I was blind in one eye. And the doctor told me my other eye would go blind. And she said, when you prayed that prayer, she goes, I just sat there and I thought, well, what am I doing? I got to believe. 
And she says, so I peeled it just a little bit to see, because if I didn't see, then I'd put it right back on again. She goes, I peeled it a little bit, and she says, and then I seen gray. She said, not black anymore, gray. And I kept looking, then I started seeing shadows of people. And then all of a sudden, the color came back, and I can see again. How many know the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever? He knows exactly what he's doing. And I said, Lord, can you imagine if I hadn't gone? Because I almost didn't go. Because I thought three days and three hotels and uh, transportation to the airport. And I'd rather just go direct to the airport. But, Lord, I can't deny a church me arriving there. And so when I went, she came up and she said that she could see again. The blindness had left her eye. And I know the Lord healed her where her other eye will continue to be steadfast and she'll be seeing the rest of her life because when God does something he doesn't do it 30 he doesn't do it 60 he does it 100 fold amen and so I just want to encourage you because this wasn't me before me before had to lay hands on you and had to lay hands on you and had to lay hands on you and lay hands on you and lay hands on you and lay on you and hopefully People will start falling over so I don't have to keep laying hands on people. <laughs> and I'm like reaching across people and laying hands. And that was my yesteryear. My today is a whole new thing. And that's a new level of faith to believe God. That what God says, he will do. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for having me.